Good evening. It is 6.54 in the evening on Sunday, the 28th of October, in the year of our Lord, 2018. This is my third video of the evening, but it's the second one that was is not a parody. So, in honor of it being the second video, let us talk about how I love the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. Of America, the Constitution of the United States of America, the Second Amendment is by far the most empowering of all the amendments to the Constitution of the United States. And why it shall not be infringed is so important. It shall not be infringed because in your First Amendment, you're able to tell folks how you think that they are incorrect and how they are wrong and how you're able to speak your mind. But the, here's the deal, folks. You can speak your mind all day you want to from the inside of a cell because they think the, the state believes that you are inciting a riot. And this is not meant to incite a riot at all or cause harm to anybody or anything. It is just that the Second Amendment allows you... It's not there to shoot deer, provide food. Those are byproducts of it. It is granted to you by... The institution of the government government to protect yourself from tyrants rogue agents with inside the government that in every level that may choose to detain you against your will when you have done absolutely nothing wrong at all now there's a difference between being a gun owner and a criminal just like there's a difference between being a government servant a public servant in the government and a tyrant. 90% uh, of the people, if not more, people that work for the government are good people stuck in a bad system. There's that 10 to maybe 1%, depending on where you're at and depending how huge the government is, that that creates the, uh, if you remember from my first video today, the math. we got to do the math on this. Uh, the calculator and how we can calculate how many tyrants there are, but one thing that we seem to forget is that absolute power corrupts absolutely, always has, always will, since time immemorial. What what we need to seem to rem to what we need to do is to I understand that you know history teachers are a dime a dozen, but they're not they're not they're teaching the history of the victors. Uh, it's histor his story, his story, history, his story, the story that is one that is being taught to us. I mean, it's in books. If you read books, you can get different perspectives on all this stuff. Uh, I can guarantee you the folks that were getting uh, put in the cattle cars against their will in uh, Europe wish they had weapons to protect themselves because they... After a while, you, when people get on these trains and they don't come back, you can kind of figure out what's going on. And if you choose not to take that ride, to buy the ticket and take the ride, these folks weren't even get, they weren't even purchasing tickets; they were just stuffed on there. Uh, it's a way to defend yourself against issues like that. But that could never happen here. Just like the government of the United States would never confiscate against the will of the people all of their gold and silver in the 30s because the system was broke. And in order to prop up the dollar on the standard of one sort of another, they needed to have more gold and more silver. That didn't happen. It did. It did. Uh, a lot of strange things. It's a great time to be alive, but a lot of strange things happening that folks are just unaware of. And it's sort of by choice and sort of by ignorance. And it just, uh, once you find out what your truth is, if you don't share it with others, then you're not really doing, you're not doing any good with it. And if there's one thing I do know is I don't know everything. Uh, my experience in the submarine, where everybody was dependent upon each other for us all to survive, is unique 
in our society where eventually you had to sleep and eventually you had to trust people that weren't weren't going to kill you while you were asleep or weren't going to do things that could kill you while you were asleep. But that required the attention, 100% attention by everyone all the time to make sure that your surfaces equaled your dyes, which is actually the most important part of being a separator. But with the Second Amendment, what it does is it empowers the people to actually speak their mind and not have fear of retribution from those people in those public servants that may have a tyrannical aspect to things. You got to remember that you don't have to remember. <laughs> if you if you understand that approximately 40% of the people in this country do not vote, they choose not to participate in one way, shape, or form. Maybe they forgot. Maybe they just have disengaged from uh, that aspect of society for the betterment of themselves and have chosen to just not participate. And you know what? That is their right. That's a freedom of expression, right? That's the First Amendment. Freedom of who they associate with, why they associate with, along with religion. There's also, you know, the petition of redress or grievances is in there. And you, you can't petition them if you're dead. <laughs> and self-preservation is a natural law that supersedes any government in, from time immemorial. But the recent days with this this bomber or this mail thing, the MAGA dude hmm. with the funky van with all the stickers on it professionally on there. It's really kind of troubling on how most people just go hook, line, and sinker into it and they blame the leader of the nation, the, ele the duly elected leader of the nation. Uh, for its cause when if this would have happened in a, a prior the prior administration or any prior administration it would have been blamed on something else but the corporate leadership that the nation is currently under is the kind of leadership that it really needs in my opinion now it's just my opinion uh you can call him names or retrace his history or whatever, but the man was really, really successful in the world of business, which is a lie agreed upon to turn a dollar in my eye. And his success in business in understanding that government is a business, even though we were raised to say that we can't raise it or we can't run it like a business because it's government we even even in my hometown here when uh one of the young men that's running running or is standing for election is a writing candidate for the city council when he approached our manager here in town he said yeah i'm the ceo of a business and the council members are just like in a, a board of directors to tell me what to do i don't know of many cities in this country that have had a city manager be and staunch for as long as this person has been, but the force is strong down here in Cochise County, folks. It's very, it's measured and on the level, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, but the Second Amendment is the very reason why the folks coming up in this supposed Dodge Caravan or this caravan that's dodging everything or whatever that seems to be growing all the time, this group of migrants coming up here. Supposedly, I really don't believe anything on the, I see on the news anymore. Uh, it, I know it's all uh, corporate media uh, for less, for, for 
It's a distraction. It's a uh, worst case scenario is propaganda. Uh, it's made to make you make us all fear. Uh, it's as if the forces of this world feed off of fear. And if we can create more fear, then uh, it feels as if it's self-creating itself or able to remove that energy. Uh, the opposite of fear is love. <laughs> we love each other. We love our neighbor. If we follow the golden rule and treat others how we would like to be treated, there's that's really uh, empowering. But the, the difficult part with this is that we don't, in a capitalist society, the government, when it is a company and it needs to make a turn a profit, who and what is it doing to create the profit that it needs and requires to sustain itself? If it's owned by stockholders, who who are the stock that is owned? Is it the, uh, is it, I mean, are we all chattel and goyim? I would hope that we don't say, think that. There's a reason that I served 20 years in the Navy, was to be able to disengage myself from the system and more or less live out my days in peace. But unfortunately, the monetary system with the Federal Reserve just printing out more money and devaluing the dollar is making that more and more difficult all the time. However, I can't see myself going back into the defense industry and more or less plotting, even though it's still piped up and uh, compartmentalized, knowing that everything that I do and did would be to end another person's life in conflict no matter what it is, and supposedly giving it my all why, while 30 to 40% of the value that I create or my, my, my value that I'm compensated with is being confiscated to perpetuate that same, that same, uh, the death of other people. That's not, treating others like I would like to be treated or I would like to have my family treated or you would like to have your family treated. I'm just guessing going on the limb there. Uh, it's almost what I looked at my job as doing what I had to do to do to do it, but to do no harm while I did it. It didn't always work out that way. Sometimes we were put into a corner. Uh, you got certain things in in history where you end up with planes crashing into China with a bunch of uh, material that reminds someone of the USS Sioux or the USS Liberty that had uh, the ability to make it a little more competitive in the arena that I worked in. Since monopoly anywhere isn't good for any growth. Because you can't tax people into submission if the boogeyman doesn't exist. There's no, you can't promulgate the fear that it's required amongst the population for them to surrender 30 to 40 percent of their value to further a mission that has already been accomplished unless we are able to create a diversion some sorts. And when you refuse to create the diversion, you think you're doing a really you think you're doing a good thing for the American taxpayer about being more efficient and everything. But unfortunately historically uh, the Navy has created these diversions over the horizon and out of sight and mind to the people but just in print from the USS Maine to Gulf of Tonkin incident. It wasn't done by the Navy this time. A new diversion was made with the newest force. On land in our own country. It's my opinion. What's yours? If you have, uh, please like this video. Subscribe if you'd like to. Peace out. Michael DiCarlo signing off for DiCarlosDanger.com.